Hello once again Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Today we're going to be looking at a 132nd scale model kit. This is the Revel 1956 Cadillac Eldorado. Now I have heard rumors that Atlantis has the molds for this and at any time they could re-release it. So what I thought I would do today is show you the older Revel version. We can open up the box and have a look. And I also want to try to build this model for this video. So without further ado, let's go down to the bench and see what's in the box. Now we go all the way back to 1956 and where we get to check out the Revel 1958 Cadillac Eldorado model kit. Now, I do have a interesting story about this. This model kit is actually copyrighted from 1955 by Ravel, and Ravel started in the early 50s. So this is one of their very first plastic model kits. Now this one is a reproduction that came out in 1996 by Ravel Monogram, and it was one of those special series models where they had a 132nd scale revival, and were trying to bring back some of their original models. Now Atlantis should have the molds for these, so it'll be nice to see it come up once again in the future. But as you can see, we've got a nice, uh, almost showroom style, Cadillac brochure style image here of the Cadillac with two figures or people driving the car. There's a man behind the wheel and the woman here. So this, these figures are actually included in this kit. The model has a movable hood, it's exact scale engine, chassis, and two figures, all plastic assembly kit. And this is going to be quite different from what you normally would expect with a more modern model kit. On this side of the box, we get this wonderful cutaway side view illustration of the car, which shows the engine, the transmission, the seats. And if I just slide it along, you can also see the rear suspension and this shock absorber tank. This is for the air ride suspension that Cadillac had back in the day. So again, a really wonderful side view of this car with everything illustrated. Now, as we open up the model, I have a little confession to make. I did try to build this as a slot car, but I actually never really got very far with that because it was kind of complicated the way the model was set up. So I kind of abandoned that, but I did build some of it. So here we have the instructions, which Danny the dog will be looking at a little later on. I have the body, the chassis and floor pan, and then the seats and the dashboard. A little bit more of the front suspension. Here's the rear leaf springs. We also have the convertible boot, the driver figure, and then I've got the front bumper, as well as the chrome parts tree. We also have the female figure here and then parts trees with some of the engine bits on it and the windows for the side as well as the drive shaft we also have some of the chrome hubcaps here we've got the door panel the windshield the hood the engine block tires another door panel and a transmission uh, actually rear axle pardon me not a transmission steering wheel and then this is our air cleaner setup. So again, lots of great parts. And let's clear these out of here and let Danny the dog show you the instruction sheet. Hey everybody, this is Danny the dog, your dog on the street. And today we're looking at the 1956 Cadillac Eldorado Bazaritz from Ravel. This is a 132nd scale kit, so it'll fit right in on your slot car track. Or you can build it stock and just have it sitting on the side as like a... Uh, you know, somebody sitting there watching the car races car. A spectator! That's the word. Anyway, check out this great big write-up down here. Like, this tells you all about Cadillac's history from, like, over 53 years, starting with 1914. So, actually, 1905. So, that's quite a big write-up. And this model kit came out in 1956 from Ravel, so it is a really 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 old tooling there you can see the wonderful picture of the cadillac with the artist's uh, rendition of a 1950s house in the background so again really really cool now here we go with panel one and you can see the undercarriage and chassis it's got that nice x frame in there Part number three is the back end of the transmission, which will pop in place. And then we also have the cross member up here and our wheels. And you 
paint or yeah you'd paint these with the black wall and put a white wall in there and then you get the hubcaps coming in which would be painted gold on the real car there's our two-piece differential which trevor glued up and we also have our rear springs so all this will go in place the exhaust pipes are molded in so you'll have to use some trick painting in order to make them look realistic Panel 2 shows our completed chassis, and now we're going to be adding in our seats. So these are three pieces. You get the front bench seat and the rear of the front bench seat, and then you get the rear seat, and these go into little holes on that chassis pan. Panel 3 shows our Cadillac engine for 1956. Now there was only one engine size, and that was 365 cubic inches, but there were two different horsepower options. So the first one was 285 horsepower at 4,600 RPM, or you could get one with a better carburation system that had a 305 horsepower at 4,700 RPM. So what do we have here? Well, we've got the upper part of our engine block, which includes a little bit of the cylinder heads, as well as the intake manifold, and a little bit of where the carburetors here, and the air cleaner, are going to attach on. Then you have your front timing cover, and you add your fan on here. And then on the right and left hand sides, you have your cylinder heads with the exhaust manifolds on there. And I do believe there's a starter or some kind of air a generator possibly molded on the side. Trevor will show that when we look at the parts. Next up, we have panel number four. Now, this is a really big panel, and there's a lot going on. So now this is what Trevor was trying to explain. Back in the 50s, they did not know how to make a one-piece body, so they made it in a lot of individual pieces, as you can see. So here we have the entire side of the car with a little bit of wrapping around going to the front. Same panel on the other side. There is an inner door panel which goes into the outer side of the car with a couple little pins. This is the frame for the side glass. Now there are no clear parts in this, so the glass is just kind of pretend. There's our front windshield, our hood, the hood emblem that goes on the top, as well as the Cadillac logo going there. You also have the tops of the fenders here. You've got the firewall, you've got your dashboard, your steering column, your steering wheel, the back part of the car, which includes the inner fins and the trunk lid. And then here you got your rear bumper, you have the two passengers, you've got your Cadillac tail lamps, as well as another V8 logo there. And then up front you've got your grill with those big Dagmars. You've also got your radiator support wall with the radiator and the front headlights. Now once you get through all of that, Ravel actually gives you a front three-quarter with the hood up picture, and it shows some of the paint colors. So there's silver under here, there's black, and then black on the tire, and white for the white wall, and white and black for the interior. And then they also show up underneath, so you have silver, which they show on the cross member, which is kind of odd, but they do show it on the bottom of the transmission pan, and going back here to the mufflers, I believe. And then there's black and red in here, as well as silver in the back. So what I would suggest, because now we have the internet, is to actually look this thing up online and see what the real colors are. And at the end of the instruction sheet, at the bottom, uh, Ravel actually gave some suggestions on where you could display your model in the future, and this would actually be kind of a cool thing. Now, keep in mind the uh, lifestyle of people back in the 50s was quite a bit different from today. So anyway, what we have here is you can mount this on a lamp stand, which would be kind of neat. Or you could put it with a calendar in behind on a circular base. And then finally, this is where times have changed. You could use this on an ashtray as a Christmas present to your dad, just like back in the old Boy Scout days when they used to make stuff like this, which they don't do anymore. Anyway, yeah, so there's your uh, little holder for the cigarettes and the ashtray there, and then your model sitting there. And then down below here is a parts list for your 58 Cadillac Eldorado. So like the front suspension, the chassis. So you would look this through on the parts and make sure that everything's there. So what I'll do now is I will hand over the video to Trevor and he can show you the parts. Sadly, there's no decal sheet in there. So this is Danny the Dog signing out for this episode.
Thank you, Danny, for that wonderful lead-in, and I'll see you in the next video. So what I've done on here, like Danny was saying, all these components were separate, and I ended up gluing them together, because I was going to turn this into a slot car, but it was so complicated I couldn't really figure it out at the time, and now that I'm older and can figure it out, I really don't want to bother. <laughs> I want to build this for this video. So I've already glued all the body together. We'll take a look at that in a minute. And I've taken the hood and I've cleaned up all the seam lines. I've also cleaned up the seam lines of the windshield frame. Now this is not chrome plated, so it will have to be painted with silver. And there was a, uh, a thing back in the day where not all of this was chrome. Some of it was actually stainless steel. Uh, AMC was quite revolutionary in that. I'm not sure on GM. And then here we have our downed convertible top. There is not a upped top for this, so that's what you get. So what I wanted to show here is the body. Let's just move this out of the way for a sec. So you can see that the detail on here is quite nice. You get the Cadillac side trim as well as the emblems. Now on the Eldorado, these were gold in here. So that's always good. You also get the nice rocket in the back. The Eldorado had the rocket style fins, but the other Cadillacs still use that sort of the taillight bump and coming up like that. Now there's the Eldorado in the back on the trunk lid. There you go. And you can see my glue marks on here. I used liquid glue at the time. Uh, it does hold up nice, the tester's liquid glue. The tops of the fenders go right along here and across. So you glue the body sides together. I had to put the radiator support in here, which I could have done later, but it helped to uh, direct the sides. All this is molded in as well. Now, mold marks, there are a few in corners, but overall it's not bad. These are the little pins that the interior fits on. There's also little holes up at the top of the door, right in there, that also do the same thing. Overall, this is a really, really nice casting, even though it was built up in different steps. So be patient and take your time with that. Now the hood drops in there like that, and will be operational once everything is together. We also have our windshield, which goes into these two little holes here on the body. And I won't be able to do that. Well, there we go. Now. Unfortunately, there is no glass for this, so like Danny was saying, it is kind of pretend. But, hey, look at it this way. <laughs> You'll never have scratch glass, and it's sort of like the movies. Model cars in the movies don't actually have windshields, because it provides glare. But there's the top once you get that all together. Again, the fit on this is really nice for such a small kit. And it'll look great on your shelf, or as an ashtray. <laughs> I don't know. It's, it's kind of funny. Next up, we have the wonderful chassis, and it is an X-frame chassis. Now, there are some mold marks on here, which you'll have to get rid of. But you can see that the transmission is, or actually the oil pan and the flywheel here, are molded in place. Now there's a separate transmission component which glues into these two holes. So you have to try to keep those clean when you're painting this. The exhaust is molded in place and you get a spare tire off the side as well as a fuel cell here. And some mold marks in the back which you have to take care of with your number 16 hobby blade. There's also a couple of sink marks in this kit, namely in here in the frame but that might not make a difference. The floor pan is molded in place. There is also a little pin back here, which keeps that back seat up. There you got the, your floor mats and the pedals. Now this is an automatic, so again, it all looks really nice. You also have the little holes here for mounting your engine in, as well as the upper A arms. Now, considering this came out in 1950, or was tooled in 55 to be a 56 Cadillac, I mean, the detail on here, and it's 132 scale, don't forget that, but the detail on here is nice. You get all the little rivet heads and everything. You even have a Ravel 1956 emblem right above my finger in that little spot. There's a starter down there, so that must be a generator molded onto the engine. Now, how do the seats fit in here? Well, let's bring these into the show. So there's the front bench seat, and I've already added the back panel in place, because like I said, I was trying to build this before. Cadillac actually does have this big circle right in here. Uh, if you look at the real car, there's a really cool emblem in there. 
Now it gets chrome plated along the bottom and up over the top here. There's a lot of chrome in this car. What I'll do is I'll sh try to find you a picture of the dashboard and everything and show it in the video as we build the model along. Now look at that uh, upholstery pattern. Again, that's really nice for such a small scale. There's the back seat. And again, really excellent work on there. Mold marks in the back, but I wouldn't really worry about them because you won't see them. Now, getting back to our chassis, you can see the holes in here. Now, there's a center hole, but I'm... Maybe that's for the drive shaft. Okay, so this goes into those little holes at the end. And now you can see that little thing sticking up in the back is the bottom of the seat. So you got another glue point back there to hold this all together. And you'll notice the sink marks in the floor for the mufflers. Well, those all get covered by this front seat, which just goes right in there. So again, it does look really good. There are a couple of sink marks in the back, but let's see, those disappear once you put that seat into place. So again, this is a really cool kit, and it will be nice once it gets re-released from Atlantis. Here's the rest of the interior components, and you get these really nice molded right and left hand side door panels, which is wonderful because all the winders and cranks actually look like real GM winder and cranks instead of just a blob of plastic on there. The texturing is really nice. Now these were actually pockets in the door that you could put your maps and whatever in from the top. And then we also have our dashboard in here, which is almost all chrome. The chrome wraps up into the tops of these door panels on the real car. There's our steering wheel, and we also have our steering column. So if I bring these up, now remember, this is 132nd scale. So again, very tiny, but look at all that nice detail in there. The glove box and the instrument panel and all the little knobs and everything. Just great work. There's our steering wheel looking like the real deal. Steering column, of course, well, it's just a tube, but that's all right. Now, there's our door panel. I'll bring up just the one. But again, you can see the wonderful detailing down in here. And along the bottom is chrome plated. And then up where the handles are, it's all chrome in there. And you get the nice little armrests as well. So again, really excellent work from a model kit that is... Well, older than dirt. <laughs> Here we have our engine components for our Cadillac 365. So there is the engine block, the transmission up there. We also have our triangular air cleaner, our front engine cover, and the cylinder heads, and the fan. So let's just take a look at how well this was done back in the day. Again, you can see all the nice detail on top of that manifold. So this will be really nice to paint up. The engine color was like a dark blue, so I can show a picture of the real engine right now. So how does our little 30-second scale engine stack up? Well, I think it's not too bad. There's the bottom of our transmission. Again, really kind of cool. You will have to uh, make sure this is all sanded down nice to make it fit into the underneath. There's our air cleaner. Now, these were usually painted black, but I have seen some that are gold. And this would end up on top of the engine like that. And then on this parts tree, you have your timing chain cover. You also have the back of the cylinder head. So there it is there. And then there's all this detail on here. And on this side, you've got your exhaust manifolds as well. And that nice little fan on there. Now, there were some mold marks on the back of these cylinder heads, so you'll have to remove them in order to make this fit nice and flat up against that side of the engine block, and that's using your number 16 hobby blade, or maybe even a file. But overall, all this looks really, really wonderful for such a small scale. Here we have the components, which makes up our drive line. So there is the drive shaft right there. We also have the side vent windows for the Cadillac, which are molded separate and again need to be painted with silver or chrome plated or something like that. We also have our rear leaf springs. Now this differential was in two pieces, but I did make it into one. We also have our front suspension, which is one piece. And then we've got our four tires and our four hubcap and wheels down here. And like I was saying, these are painted gold inside here. 
you will have to take a look at that on the real car just to make sure that everything lines up and that you're not painting the whole thing gold because I'm not sure if that is really how it goes. The tires are really nicely done as well. So let's start bringing this up to the camera. So here we have our tire and the tread pattern is really simplistic, but it does have the proper pie plate in here. And then all this inside would be your white wall with the outer rim being black. So instead of painting this black and then doing the white wall, it might actually work out better if you paint the entire wheel white and then very carefully go around with a paintbrush and paint the black on the outer because there isn't much black on the outer. Most of this is white wall. Now let's see how our little hubcap goes in. So you notice it's got a, a pin on the back there and that would just drop right into place just like that. So overall, again, it looks really nice once you get it done. Now let's just move our tires and that out of the way. And there's our front suspension. Again, you can see just kind of how cool it is. It's got those shocks up in the front. Those would be air assisted. And then it's also got some of the kingpin bits. Now there is an axle somewhere that goes right through this whole thing and goes into the wheel backs there. So that would be really, really good. There's the lower A arms there. And all this clicks in on that chassis really nicely. Here's our rear axle. Again, looking really good. It's got the proper loops on there, which would go on the top of the springs. And then the back end here, the pumpkin at the back. So again, really nice. Springs look like actual leaf springs for such a tiny scale. There are some sink marks in here, which you can address with a little bit of putty. And then there's our drive shaft, which is just basically a straight rod. Now, it does have a flat spot in there and the pin, so that hooks up to the chassis. And then there's our side vent windows. So again, overall, this is really nice for such a small scale. Here we have the chrome parts tree minus the four wheels and the grill. So I did actually cut this down a little bit from what was in the box. But there's our front grill. And again, you would paint uh, gold in here. That was special for the El Dorado being the top of the line. And there is a notch in here which basically matches up with the hood. The chrome on here is really nice. You also get your parking lights or driving lights down below. So again, really excellent work considering this is tooled in 1955. So there's our rear bumper. I'll just turn this around. It does have a spot for a license plate, even though there's none included in the kit, but you can always make one following this video's directions up here. And then we also have the back and the exhaust actually exited through the center of, well, the outer edges of the bumper. That was a 50s style thing. There's our headlights down there and the tail lights. So you would need some sort of red in the back just to uh, make that look proper. And then our Cadillac emblem for the front and the V in the back. And then we also have these little side spear things. Oh, that goes on the top of the hood. So again, the chrome on this is really excellent for such a tiny scale and will look just like the real car once it's installed. Next up, we have our 30-second scale figures, and I'll just name him Adam and her Eve. So you can see that Adam is sitting on the bench seat in the way that uh, Adam is supposed to be sitting on the bench seat back in the day, with his arm resting along the back and one hand sort of hanging off the side of the car. So they are not really driving. They more or less stopped the car. And then Eve is staring at Adam as uh, she sits on the seat as well. So speaking of sitting on the seat, how do they actually engage with the vehicle? So let's just move the seat down here and I will put Adam on. So this is with him with his back and everything sitting perfectly on that seat. And then of course we'll have Eve over here. Now she is sort of staring in toward Adam. So her line of sight is essentially this way sort of thing. And his line of sight is there. So they are more or less engaging with each other. Now you could move them closer together. And there we go. So this is how people actually were in cars back in the 50s. And again, they do sit on the seat really nicely. They're not, uh, they're, they're actually 
their backs and bottoms and everything are sitting on the seat, resting the way they should be. So again, this is really excellent work for 1955 for tooling and everything. And it is a nice snapshot into what people looked like back then. So here is Adam wearing a suit jacket with a bow tie. So again, you might want to look at some of the old fashion magazines and that sort of thing when you go to paint so that you know what these look like. Now, how do they get them to fit in the seat so nice? Well, their body is not entirely there, but it is actually notched out to be sitting on the seat, like so. So you can see that he's actually absorbed into the seat the way it would be if you were a body, say, of maybe, well, let's say 175, maybe 190 pounds, and you are sitting in there and the seat is actually, you know, bending in, forming down to your body. Also, it's nice to see how his hand sits in there right up against the back, again, suggesting that the seat is actually compressing underneath. Now, as for Eve, you can see how nice she is. She's wearing one of those head scarves because this is a convertible and she doesn't want her hair blowing around. But again, her back legs, now she is tilting forward. So back here, there's a sink mark and there are some mold marks. So you're gonna really have to clean that up again with that number 16 hobby blade. But see how the bottom of her legs are molded in into that shape of the seat again. So saying maybe about, I don't know, 110 pounds for Eve. Again, it, it looks correct. And that's one nice thing about these Ravel kits. So Ravel had a few of these 132nd scale kits. And of course, all they came with, they all came with figures. There's actually the Lincoln Futura and the Pontiac Club de Mer in 25th scale that also have sitting figures. So again, we can see just how wonderful this is, and these will look good once I get them all painted up. So that was a review of all the parts, and now we can actually begin to start to work on this model. Now, unfortunately, I did glue the sides together, so I can't really show you how to get that all accurate. But I do have another one of these Ravel kits coming up in the future, in my own future videos, and that one has not been touched at all. So we can get into that in the future video. But for now, we have to go and hunt around looking for mold marks and imperfections. So right here, underneath the hood, there are four. One, two, three, four. Now the way I'm going to get those out is with my number 16 hobby blade. I'm just going to demonstrate on one. So you can see how the blade is shaped this way. That's so you can get nice and flat inside here. You could use a chisel blade, but the reason why I don't do that is because with a chisel blade, you're pushing like this, and that tends to dig down into the plastic if you're not very, very careful. Whereas this way, you just scrape at one angle for a little bit, and then you change your angle. This is like cross sanding or cross scraping and you go in like that and eventually the mold mark will flatten out and you're left with a smooth surface free of mold marks and the other way is to use a file now i've got this narrow type file and again that would be just to file it and anyway once you file down your mold mark and everything is smooth under here. You can go in with your sandpaper. Now this is a 400 sandpaper and I did use it to sand something that was green. That's why that's there. But again, you want to use a cross sanding technique. You can do this with your finger or get a sanding block inside there. But again, I'm going at this angle and now I'm going to reverse it and go at the, at the opposite angle. And that makes an X pattern in here, which will actually make this nice and flat. So again, I will have to go into all four corners and get rid of these mold marks. And I'm also going to have to turn around and hunt them down underneath the body, making sure that any of these mold marks are not going to interfere with, say, the chassis or the fit and finish of this car in any way, shape, or form. Now, the other thing I want to do is take and sand the body now maybe not with 400 but say around 
well, 400 wet sand. This You can put the sandpaper in water, so that would be wet sanding. Go 400, 600, 800, and 1,000 grit, and be careful of all your little emblems and things. And then once this has a 1,000 grade sandpaper scratch pattern on it, that is ideal for using as a tooth for when you spray paint the model, the paint will stick into the nice sanded surface, and if the scratches are nice and fine, you won't see them after two coats of paint. So that is where we're going to go next and paint the body and the interior components. I spent the afternoon cleaning up all the parts and gluing some sub-assemblies. So I needed some Tamiya putty. This is the basic type, as you can see right there. And it is gray in the tube. So I used a little bit on the frame right there, as well as filling in those sink marks here and here. And I also glued the rear axle together. It's just sitting loose. This is so that it will go into the right shape overnight as the glue dries. Now on the body, I noticed there's a lot of cracks going along here. So I added in the gray putty and in there, as well as along this piece of the molding because it was separate. And then in the back, I added in some on the curved parts. I hope I can get in there with the sandpaper. Whoops. <laughs> Here, let's move this like that. Then the other thing I did was I sanded down the edges of the wheel, because, or the tire, because that was pretty rough. And I removed the chrome inside here, and I also had to sand it down on the top. And that is so that when the axle gets in here, the metal axle, and sits on our plastic axle in the back, everything in there will be square and aligned perfectly, just so that this ends up rolling the right way and uh, not jamming up or anything. I also added some putty into the back on the woman here, on Eve, because there was a, a big sink hole right in the back. And then I glued the engine block together. So there it is there. And you can see how the manifold and the, in, the, uh, the covers there worked, as well as the intake manifolds. Or cylinder heads, pardon me, boy. <laughs> Busy day making models. And I also have the fan sitting on here, but it's just loose so that I could paint it. I have to uh, get my reference pictures out and see how it looks. I also cleaned up that air cleaner. And then the other thing I've done is I've cleaned up inside the steering wheel here, but I still need to do the outer ring. And I'm going to put this in the drill press and spin it with the drill press so it comes up perfectly round. And as this is spinning, I'll hold the sandpaper block onto the edge of that steering wheel and that'll smooth out the final shape, make it 100% perfectly round. So that is what I've done. Now I need to wait for the spot putty to dry up, and then I'll sand that with my sanding block using some 400 grade sandpaper, and just smooth it all out, and then this whole model will be ready for painting. And here's the undercarriage of our 56 Cadillac Eldorado after I added in the putty and sanded it down. So now you can see it looks a lot nicer in here. There's no sink mark right in there. And I've also done the frame horns up front here so that they are also nice and smooth. So what I'll do next is I will paint this undercarriage with semi-gloss black as well as some of the other components of the kit. Now before I paint this frame, I'm actually going to take advantage of this little bit that's sticking up here. This is the rest for the back seat. And I filed it down just a little bit here and here on those sides because it's tapered and it doesn't really need to be tapered for holding the seat on. And it, if it's tapered, the clip's just going to shoot off the frame. So instead of doing that, I will hold it like this after that's sanded nice and flat. And I'm going to hold it with this so I can spray paint the floor mat in here as well as the top of the front frame rails. The back don't really need to worry about because that's hidden. And then I can turn it this way and spray paint it on this side and have the whole clamp hold it in place. So here's a bunch of the components that I painted for today. Now what I did is I painted the rear axle and the front suspension with semi-gloss black. As you can see, they did turn out quite nice. Quite nice indeed. So these can dry up. Now I also painted all the seats and the interior components with the satin white 
And I've been noticing the Cadillac interior has black in there as well. And uh, it should look like this. Now I also painted the fronts of the wheels white. That's for the white walls. And what I'll do is I'll once this is dry, I'm going to turn these over and spray paint them satin black on the back. And then if I've got some spare black paint, I'm going to go around in the tread pattern here in that pie plate wedge. And I'm also or I have also painted the rear drive shaft flat black. That's just to make it stand out a little from the satin black. And then I'll move this out of the way and I'll show you some more. So here we have our frame as well as our steering wheel. This of course being the chassis with the frame and the exhaust manifolds and gas tank. So let's just take a look at the steering wheel so far. Now I painted this with the semi-gloss white again and I will do the detail painting as we go through. So I'll just move that to the side. Now here's the underframe and you can now notice where I actually put the putty. You can't really tell what side it was. And the frame horns there, they look nice and smooth. So my putty blended in nicely with the sandpaper. Now holding the clip, you can see I've also got the satin on the carpet here. Sort of like a big rubber mat almost. Now what I should really do is paint this flat black in here to make it look like carpet and leave these as the rubber bits. Same with the pedals to make them look like how the pedals actually looked with the black rubber on there. Again, turned out really nice as you can see. And now let's take a look at some other components. Now here we have Adam and Eve and what I'm doing here is using the trim clad flat black as a primer. And these characters will of course be painted up afterwards. But this is just to give the top paints the uh, the acrylics that I'm going to use, it gives it a bit of a background on here, a base for it to attach to. Now I did use some putty in the back of Eve here, she had a big sink mark. I didn't really perfect this out too well, so I'm just hoping that the seat back will kind of cover it, but we'll see. It's a little bit uh, hard to do that now because I just painted the seat, so I really, I really don't want to try to put her on there in case it makes a uh, paint mark that we can't get out. But again, you can see the nice detail. Once it all got painted up with the primer, it does look a lot better. Now, as far as the Cadillac body is concerned, I have actually applied the putty on here and sanded it. There was a big long crack in here. It uh, made the chrome trim look like two separate pieces and on the real car, it's a single piece. So I did try to put some putty in there and carefully sand it. I just hope it's gonna work out right. And I also sanded up here on the tops of the fenders where there was some putty needed as well. And what I really should do is reinforce a little more in here with some styrene strips and some glue just to make that a little more rigid. The body will also have to be pinched together a little bit for the interior. And one area that I did have some trouble with, which I've got to correct, this is why it hasn't been painted yet, is right here in this fin there was a huge gap along here. It didn't quite glue together as well as on this side, and even this side struggled with some problems. So I will need to sand that out and just add in some more putty and sand that again for a second coat just to smooth it all up. But overall I think this is turning out quite well. I am thinking of painting this body gloss black, which I think would look nice with the white interior and everything. Although I have seen that interior in other color Cadillacs across the web, including like a yellow, sort of like a sunflower yellow, as well as reds and other colors. So again, I think it would look good in gloss black. So I'm going to try that. Another thing I have not got to paint yet, as well as the car body, is the actual Cadillac engine, because I still need to determine actually how this is painted. I've seen these in dark blue with white valve covers. I need to find out if the fan is black or if it's white or what's going on or if it's blue again. Uh, and then we also have our air cleaners here, which I've seen some in black and some in cream color. So again, I'm just going to have to research this out a little bit more and then I can paint it. One thing I was thinking of doing is maybe taking one of these, putting it in the hole so that I've got something to hold on to when I spray paint. Although that that was not too stable right there. 
And the fan I can actually do that a little better with because it just goes into here. So that won't be too much of a problem. So I'll paint this and then you get to see how it looks. So here's our chassis and engine after I glued it and painted it all up. And I just want to show you how it all went together. There was no problems with this. For a kit made in 1956, I think, or 55 actually, this one turned out really well. I used some trim clad royal blue for the engine. Now that oil pan was molded in place. This is Tester's dark blue right here. And that's covering the back half of the oil pan and the uh, flywheel here. And then that's a light blue again. I'm not going to try to diffuse this blue and brush paint it on here because this was molded in place. So, But that front suspension clicks in nice. There's two little hooks that go up through the tops of the A, uh, the A frame here, or sorry, the A arms, and they click in place with little hooks. But I was <laughs> force testing this to see how well those hooks could hold on, and of course they let go after a lot of pressure, and I broke one of the little hooks off. So I had to scrape the paint off and glue it in place. Add a little touch up here by the king pin. But uh, overall, this turned out really nice. You can see the exhaust that I painted in. So it's steel down here, and then the mufflers are actually painted with aluminum, which is kind of hard to tell, and then the steel tank. Now the rear leaf springs and axle were all separate. Painted that drive shaft flat black. You can't really... Well, I guess you can kind of tell here on film. And uh, then the fan was also painted with semi-gloss black. The semi-gloss black that I used for touch-up was testers, but this was actually trim-clad spray-painted overall. And there's a bit of a brighter sheen onto the semi-gloss semi with the trim-clad than there is on the testers. So it kind of ended up a little bit flat, and hopefully the camera doesn't pick that up. So next up I'd have to put in the axles in the paint up the wheels. But uh, overall, this is quite nice. There's even spark plugs molded in here. So if you were really uh, advantageous with this kit, you could actually put a distributor in. Keep in mind, this is 132nd scale, so everything is pretty small. I used Tester's gold line, or lime gold paint on here originally, and it didn't look right. So luckily, <laughs> I didn't have any of this gold left. It all turned into jelly in the bottle. But I was able to actually go up to Michael's in the next town and they had like three rows of this or two rows of this gold which is the uh, testers I think it's well I can leave the number down below but they had a lot of it and it looks so much better than that lime green gold that I was using which was really awful oh and one nice thing is this engine block is hollow underneath here but right where the suspension plugs in, it covers over all of that. So that's a really nice design feature for such a small scale car. Now, how does this fit into the body? Now, I haven't painted up the body yet, but overall, I mean, I need to add the interior in here as well. And that's going to be a bit of a trick. We'll start doing that next, and I'm going to paint up Adam and Eve as well. But look at how nice this goes. This just needs to be brought in a little bit and glued into the sides which will come up later and I gotta reinforce the body in here still but look under the hood I mean doesn't that look nice so far so far so good and I do believe the hood is gonna go over top of that air cleaner might be a little bit close to the top of the hood but I think that's how it's supposed to go overall this looks great I mean for the scale 1 32nd scale you get that nice Cadillac engine in there, and uh, I'm not sure about painting the floor flat black. I don't think you're going to see much of it, because these holes are the front of that bench seat, and then the back in here, so you're only going to see a little bit. I might just leave that semi-gloss, even though it should be flat black for a carpet. But overall, it looks like there's going to be no issues with this going together. So again, really nice. I'll get the uh, tires painted up. I need to make metal axles for the wheels, but... Overall, it'd be great. And look, there's that Ravel 1956 stamp. Oh, I found out this, this kit originally came out as a Ravel AMT. And it actually shows it on the box art back in the day. So let's continue with this. I know Atlantis has some molds. They're actually 
I was looking this up and they are reissuing it. They have the box art. So I will get that off the web and show that box art at the end of the video. So now let's see how I do with the interior and Adam and Eve. Here we have our Adam and our Eve figures that come with the kit. Now I don't know if Atlantis is actually going to reissue the figures in there. I think they should though because they are on the parts tree. But it doesn't show it on the new box art. So anyway, what I've done here is I've researched some clothes of 1956. And I found this sort of maroon kind of jacket with the white shirt. The black bowler tie was popular. The pants are supposed to be sort of a whitish, light blue-gray color. So I tried to emulate that with the Citadel Games Workshop paints and the multi-layer effect. I gave them some blue suede shoes, which were popular back then. Get off of my blue suede shoes. Yeah, Carl Perkins and then Elvis Presley did that song. Gave him the uh, brown eyes. And then for the lady, I gave her a purple uh, dress here. And then she also has this uh, scarf over her head, which is a matching purple, as well as the purple shoes. Now, I tried to paint the legs the same color as the skin. But I thought I should stop here. It actually gives it sort of like that she's wearing nylons in a way. So again, that all looks good. And I gave her green eyes and red hair. And she is looking at the gentleman here. And I also gave her some red lipstick. So if I just take him off the chair, we can look at Adam first. My fingers out of the way. Get him in focus. Uh... Okay, right about there. So you can see just how he looks. Now again, he is formed into the contour of that chair back, as you can see. So again, does fit in there nice and well, just like they're sunken into the chairs. I also put brown leather on the bottom of those blue suede shoes because that's how they actually are in the real world. And then for Eve here, I had to fill in that hole that was in her back, and it did turn out pretty well once you got the paint all through. Now she's contoured to the seat, but more back here because she is leaning forward. But again, she ended up looking quite nice. And there you can see the uh, lipstick on the face there. You have to excuse my huge fingers. Now, all I need to do next is paint the seats, just like the image from before, and it should look good. Now, in case you're wondering, Adam is not actually holding the steering wheel or anything. His arm does lean outside the, uh, the Cadillac, up on the side of the car. And then this arm is in the back. And then Eve, you know, you can position her closer to him so that he's got her arm in behind, his arm in behind. Or you can move her quite far away, like, hey, what are you doing? <laughs> but overall, I do think they have that 1956 look. And they should look really great once they're in the car. And the upholstery is painted in the right colors. Here we have our tires. And these have been flipped over and painted with the satin black. And you can see that it turned out really nice. Now all I need to do, if I take this off the tape, you can see the white wall on the other side. And all it needs is this little pie plate edge painted with some satin black. So I'll use that tester semi-gloss. And then I also have our hubcaps here, which is the wheel portion as well, with the little bit on the back. And that would go right into the tire here. And I'd need to scrape the paint just outside of this. So scrape it in here on that bottom. And the back of the wheel was all scraped off too. And then what I need to do is, I don't have any metal axles for this. I don't know where they went. So I have this craft wire. Now this is a, a metal rod here, about the right thickness. I'll have to crazy glue it in because there's a little bit of slop in there. It's not a perfect uh, match to whatever was originally in the kit. And this green here, these were actually stems for flowers, believe it or not. So this is all a fabric that, or a thread that's been wrapped around here. So I need to figure out the length and cut the metal axle and then peel off this, uh, this wrapping here. And we should be okay for metal axles and wheels. 
There is also some gold paint that goes in on the hubcaps here. So I'll have to see what that is and where it goes. And then I'll have the nice wheels all ready for our car. Now here we are with the interior after I added a little bit of paint and bare metal foil. Now what I did is I glued the seats in place and I also glued down Eve. I didn't glue Adam because half of his arm is hanging over the side of the car. So he's going to be the last, well almost the last thing to go in. The steering wheel will be the absolute last. So let's just take a look at this up close. Now I also added the wheels on here and as you can see I painted that pie crest ridge with the semi-gloss black and I also painted in the gold on the wheel and put it all together. Now I had to make my own metal axles in here. That was 1 16th gauge rod that I cut into shape, filed the ends off to get rid of any burrs and added in some crazy glue and they roll really nicely. Now I did add in some bare metal foil up around the front on the seats and up over the back. And that was just for uh, ease of convenience. I did pinstripe in the chrome into the back along under that armrest, as well as the ashtray in there. Again, it went together really nicely. Now our door panels, I added in the chrome along the bottom here and then hand pin striped up around. This was tricky because that trim goes up like this and off. And then there's where the window cranks are. And I added a little black on the top. Same with the other side. That's to match the dashboard that now has the black padded top. And then I was looking at what it's like, the YouTube channel. My friend Jay there actually went inside one of these Cadillacs and was showing us this glove box door with the two dual ashtrays side by side. Again, a lot of chrome in this Cadillac, so it was a good reference to actually get the car together. Then we've also got our steering wheel here with the chrome ring on there. And again, really nice work. Now I'll just move this out of the way for a second because I want to focus on these interior panels. Now, on the car, there's actually these four holes inside the door. You will have to enlarge them a little bit in order to get everything to fit. And the other thing I did is I took my number 16 hobby blade and just kind of thinned down the sides of these pegs because they are a little bit fat and that will actually prevent them from sitting in the door nicely. So if I can just get this in here on film in this little take here. Let's see, it's a little tricky. But anyway, okay. The pins will line up and press into place now and up nice and tight up against where the door panel meets the body. And what's nice about these is they have a little hook underneath and when you pop your undercarriage in, that hook actually goes up and around in here and there. And I'll have to paint those little dots right there and there with the semi-gloss black. That's from the bottom of the seat pins. Anyway, yeah, it holds it in really nice and tight just on those two little clips. And the whole undercarriage will stay in place and not fall out, which is really amazing for technology from the 50s, especially with this multi-piece body that we saw before. There's those two clips in action, and, you know, take a look at this, right? I can shake this all I want, and the bottom doesn't fall out of there. So that's really uh, good on the technology of this model kit. Here we have a dry fit of our Cadillac. Now, I did notice that the tops of the door panels actually pulled out of the holes, but once they're glued down, that should be all right. My dashboard also has a problem of falling down inside there but that will be glued in place, so again, that'll be fixed. One thing I'm thinking of doing is gluing the windshield frame and the little side windows in place before actually painting the body. And the reason for that is that this is pretty loose and flimsy, and it does seem that it actually needs to be glued right along this ridge here, which I don't think would be very easy to try to scrape and paint because there's not too much behind the curvature of this window frame, and there's no glass in this model at all. So again, there's sort of like these minuses to the actual construction there. So what I think I'll try to do is just paint the thing, 
with the windshield on and then attempt to paint the windshield frame afterwards, which I don't think will be too much of a problem. One other thing I noticed is if you see here, if I bring this to the camera, Adam's arm kind of leans nicely over and out the window and then comes back in. There's only one issue is that that square window frame, this part of his hand is blocking the hole for gluing it down. So he actually needs to be like this. Uh, a little more advanced into Eve, I guess. <laughs> but I don't know. The other thing is his blue suede shoes that I gave him. They line up more with the pedals if he's over like this. As opposed to out here where they don't really line up. So again, that's the other reason why I'm thinking of gluing those side windows in place. Just so I can get the location of Adam better. Now I did drop the grill off of here, so I'll just quickly pop it back in place. But now you can see this is really looking like a 56 Caddy. The interior again looks really nice inside there. So yeah, it'll be awesome. I think the only hard part is going to be to get that steering wheel in place. But I do believe once the dash is actually glued in, it should work. I think I might have to pad the edges of this dashboard with evergreen styrene because there's only just one little pin that sticks in here and that's your only gluing point on this entire instrument panel which again is not the greatest but just take a look at that dash it does look pretty cool inside there this is going to be nice once it's all finished so let's carry on and I think what I'll do now is paint that exterior because, I mean, with all the gray primer on here, <laughs> it does look like it kind of uh, is a work in progress machine. So let's carry on. Now here we have our Cadillac with the windshield glued in place as well as the side windows. And this actually worked out well because Adam's arm links in just behind that side window in the proper place with the shoulder going over and the elbow going over the side of the car. So this is as uh, Ravel intended. This model kit was actually a combination from Ravel and AMT, believe it or not, way back in the day, so that's interesting. But yeah, notice how his arm does go over. And if I bring this up even closer, you can see, whoops, it's getting a little too close to Eve there. <laughs> okay, you can see that the edge of his sleeve here actually goes right into the corner of that window frame. So it does work out in the end. It just takes a little bit of patience. So what I'll need to do is just scrape away a little bit around his leg here so I could glue him in. But before I do that, I actually need to paint the car. And like I was saying before, there is no windshield. It's almost like one of those, uh, you know, filming studio models. I did find that I had to glue the windshield down and really push it into place. I glued the sides first so that I could actually aim in and push the windshield frame up in. They do have little wings on the inside that glue to the side of the inside of the window frame, so that helps. I also had to push down in many corners because this wanted to leave gaps underneath. There is still a little gap, but it's not too great. As it was before, it was actually a big, you know, you could slip a credit card underneath there kind of thing. So that's something to note with that windshield. So what I'll do here is I'll finish off the bodywork. There was a little bit of a rough area just back here on this side. So I'll have to clean that up. And then I will paint this thing. I will primer it and paint it. I'm not going to show you that because this video has already gone on long enough. I will paint all the details, glue it together, and show you the finished result. Before I actually paint the model with gloss black, this is just how it looks with flat black primer and a bit of dust. It's been a while, but uh, doesn't this really look cool, actually? Maybe I should leave it in the flat black primer. So here we have my Cadillac, and I've brush painted this with the trim clad gloss black paint. And one thing that I did notice with this after it had all dried is that there was a lot of dust in my paint job. And I'll just bring this up to the camera. I don't know if you can actually see it or not. But yeah, it's all right in there up around the holes. So what I'm thinking of doing is letting this dry a little bit longer, maybe a couple of days. And then I'm going to just sand it and try to paint it again with the brush. 
and see how it goes. But overall, I am impressed with the high level of gloss on this. It does look quite nice. All it needs now is just that little perfection coat, and it should turn out quite nicely once we get it all back together. But again, that dust, <laughs> it uh, kind of bothers me. But this is actually one coat of the gloss black. And you can see just how well it covered over the flat black primer. I also painted a bit in the dash because, well, if you look underneath in that wheel arch, there's a little exposed area. That's where I could not spray with the flat black. So I just redid it with the trim clad flat black in a tin and it matched perfectly. Looks great and is quite wonderful, actually. I just wish there wasn't any dust in this because I would be putting it together right now with the bare metal foil. But, you know, I do want it to look dust free. And there's about a million pounds of dust in this hood right here. So unacceptable. Let's sand it and try again. I'll sand it with maybe 600, 800, something like that, and then brush paint it. Here we have the nice 1956 Cadillac Eldorado from Ravel. And this is finished 28 years after I bought the model kit. Bought it originally in 1996 and here we are in 2024. And you can see how wonderful this looks. All brush painted with trim clad paint. It does have a tendency to want to roll. So I'll just try to move it back to where it was and hope it doesn't spin off again. So basically I used the Molotol Chrome Pen right up here. I actually used the refill cartridge. I poured it out into a plate and then just took my brush and used it, you know, as a paintbrush sort of thing. Now, one thing I will say is that I painted this aluminum first, or actually with the uh, silver from testers, then went over the top with the Molotol chrome pen. Seems to be kind of holding up that way. I know some people have had problems with that pen. Anyway, I've got Eve glued in looking at Adam. Now, Adam was a little bit more difficult to glue in because I thought his bottom of the legs would glue to the seat. Now, they have with Eve, but then Eve isn't really resting on anything. So to get Adam to glue in, I actually had to crazy glue underneath his arm here and underneath his arm here. So let's just pick this up and bring it up close. There we go. So I got them in underneath the arms and that's really all that's holding them in. The steering wheel is nice because it then fit in and went into that uh, U-shaped clip underneath the dashboard. And the way it was shaped on the end of the steering column, it actually locked into, let's just move this around here. There's a little hole up in here somewhere and it clicked into the hole and locked in. So that was always nice. And then I noticed I made a little mistake on the car, but too late to correct it. So up in the wheel arches, you can see the kind of light gray, or actually it's like a cream colored plastic this was molded in. I forgot to paint the back of the seat flat black so it would disappear. And uh, to show you here, see right up behind the, the rubber tire there, you can see it. Yeah, that was my mistake on that. So when you build this, remember to paint that entire back seat area with some flat black or something to make it disappear. The other issue I had, but this might have been my paint, is that it kind of plugged up the emblems in here. And uh, that was really hard to paint, especially on the back where it says El Dorado, right between the V. That was almost impossible. Oh, and I do have another building tip. So all these emblems, the V and the one in the front, which is the Cadillac emblem. So right there on the hood, these were meant to uh, come on the car after. So you would paint the car up and then put this on, but there is no mounting holes or anything. What you need to do is scrape the paint underneath these V's and then carefully glue them on. Now what I'd recommend is instead of doing that, if you're building this kit and it's new to you, when this is still in the regular plastic color, I would actually glue the V's uh, or the emblems on because then you're able to you know, fill it in on the hood better and that sort of thing. 
and then paint the entire car. And you can see these are gold. They came chrome in the kit. So what I would suggest is glue these on, paint the entire car, then come back and paint this with the gold because it'll be properly attached. You won't have to try to scrape the paint off from underneath or any crazy thing like I did. And it would make your life a lot easier. So that's my tip on this kit. You can also see the tail lights there. And these are backup lights. And there's a little teeny sort of a reflector or something up in here. And then down below this whole area is flat black. Well, on the real car, there's supposed to be two little circles around the tailpipe. And yeah, I think they're split tailpipes underneath there. That in this scale is really hard to paint those little teeny circles in there. So I left mine off. So hopefully that's okay. And the wheels are supposed to be all gold, but I left the chrome in the centers because I don't think I can paint the little Cadillac emblem in there. But overall, I mean, this kit looks really, really good and I like it. Here's the 1956 Cadillac with the hood removed and you can see that wonderful engine under there with the awesome looking triangular air cleaner. And you can see right in the front here with the grill that I did paint gloss black in that V shape. That's just to hide all the chrome that was underneath it. Now, one thing that I did find is that the hood tab tends to get a little bit stuck or uplifted right in here. So before you glue the grill on, you might want to notch this out a little bit and test fit it with your hood. Now, looking at the headlights, I did add in a little bit of a black wash in here just to make them look a little more realistic. But again, quite a nice little kit for the scale and considering that this came out in 1956. Well, I hope you enjoyed this look at the 1956 Cadillac Eldorado by Ravel, and hopefully Atlantis will get this out as well, that we can have it back in our collections, ready to build, and for a lot of fun. This model also will look great on a slot car track. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share to this channel. Click that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you're the first one to see it. And until next time, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics, Happy model building, and we'll see you in the next video.